one? Or do people just, can they just write a decent tune? Yeah, they can, but that, I don't think that stands out over any of the other more, de or, or the other decent tunes. Yeah. So it's, it's fine to stay in the same sound and style if you're going to keep uh, banging out the, the top tunes kind of thing. But I think it's, it's that uh, f felt like an album track as opposed to one of the singles from, from back in the day. Well, I'm just trying to start a feud with Noel Gallagher because it generally helps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or sort of record sales and like that. So yeah, it's frankly appalling. <laughs> Sounds like it was written by a four-year-old <laughs> and not even his four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> if you want something a little bit more edgy and a little bit more, uh, a little bit more cutting edge, after this, we've got the new one from Keen. BBC Six. Available only to download as a taster from their forthcoming album, which is out on the 13th of October. That's Keen, and the tune is Spiralling. Steve Show Six Music, we're just listening to a couple of big tunes from a couple of big artists. <laughs> with, uh, going on the airwaves, just to keep you fully abreast. And, um, mm, well, there we are, Keen. Sammy. I'm not Keen. Oh, oh, come on, you can do better than that. I probably can. It sounded like an improper remix of the Biker Groove theme tune. I don't remember the Biker Groove theme tune. It went, ooh, Biker, Biker Groove, <laughs> okay. etc. There's people on trampolines being frozen in midair. But that, oh, see, I unfashionably used to love Keen. Their first album, I will still stand up and say it's a brilliant album. And it was brilliant because it was vocals, it was vocally driven, drums, piano, it was very clean, very lovely. What was that? Yeah, progression's good. Not if you're going to go mental, it's not. <laughs> well, I thought, didn't the, the little fella from Keen, uh, didn't he have, didn't he go a bit mental? Tom Keen. Did he yeah. end up yeah. in a, uh... He got addicted oh, to chat and Pop-Tarts or something. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. uh, he had, bit, he, had, he had a bit of a decovery and he popped in <laughs> yeah. rehab. And is that what he's come back out, having cleaned up? Yeah. Because if that's what he's done, then he's cleaned <laughs> up, pop back inside, <laughs> collect whatever you flushed out of the toilet, <laughs> start <laughs> using it again! <laughs> Um, well, yes, well, there we are. I mean, there was a spoken word section in it, so <laughs> Scroobius <laughs> Pip must have a view on that. It, I thought that was a shocking song, quite frankly. It's, it's, um, a training montage in an 80s, like, dance movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not a boxer on it, but when it's the 80s dance, and they're gonna go back and show everyone that although sure. they didn't go to the good school, they're gonna <laughs> yeah, dance yeah, yeah. their way through. And, and the spoken word, but want the family, and it's like, oh, come on, go, you can do it! Do you want to be president, I think, because <laughs> they're yeah. one point. <laughs> the blue. Um, yeah, no, but maybe there, because I've always thought it was a very canny move, yeah. is to write a tune that can specifically be used in any kind of uh, montage yeah, yeah. on TV at the end of a sports event. It's so, that was such a montage That could be used in any in yeah. any kind of sort of self-help TV show. Genius. You can in imagine that popping up in the X Factor, can't you, when they really <laughs> yeah. need to give it 110%. Um, Rufus. Oh, well, I remember my, my brother told me he watched a lot of uh, videos about uh, the war, montages of war, and Annie Lennox's Y was uh, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> showing every single montage. Montage of the wall, there's Annie crooning over to Y and making, making us think. Gold, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Bye, Spender Valley. Yeah. Um, but that, actually, that song reminded me of, similar to a, um, uh, 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 an 80s montage uh, of uh, those Australian soap opera bands who kind of form and they kind of wear t shirts and, and tr swimming trunks and they play in the youth club. And then the guitarist walks out because he secretly fancies the drummer's girlfriend and then they all get together at the end of the episode and play that song. <laughs> right, right, yes. Yeah. I can see where you're coming from. Uh, yeah. Harry, you look like you're going to try it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were talking about progression with Oasis and how they don't progress. That was progression, it was different, but their career, it's kind of like progression from being in a coma to having a horribly violent death. That was Whoa. the progression I was seeing there. And it's almost as if the government, uh, the Treasury are desperately trying to raise money in troubled times, but, you know, obvious taxes aren't the way forward. It wouldn't surprise me if Keane are some government tool to raise revenue from stupid people. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Blimey, that's uh, it's both catty but also insightful. Oh, thanks. Um, and uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, listen, um, just so that you're fully abreast what's going on musically at the moment, um, we are actually not going to be around for a couple of weeks, maybe longer. Mm. Uh, not entirely sure yet, so you have to make do with, uh, I'm sure, the excellent stand-ins. But so that you're fully up to the date on what's happening musically, you'll probably be aware that Reese Ifans, the actor and occasional paramour of ladies in tabloid newspapers, uh, <laughs> has a band and uh, they have a tune. The tune is Let's Go F in Mental. I've seen <laughs> that up. And the band are called <laughs> The Peth. Have a listen. So the band are called The Peth, and the song is Let's Go in Mental. And uh, Reese Sippens, of course, is the reason that they're getting some attention because uh, is he the lead singer? Is that what we've established? Yeah, yeah, we believe so, yeah. It's sharing Quite. singing duties with Super Fairy Animals lead singer Daff Iron. Ah, right. Um, Daff Iron. 
Oh, is it? Yeah. A lot of that information, Sorry, I'd like no. to have seen that information uh, gleaned during the song, not while we're on air broadcasting. <laughs> half a dozen people. Um, so, <clears throat> there we are. Thoughts coming at you, Rufus. Uh, Steve, one of my eternal regrets is I didn't write either uh, I Get Knocked Down by Chamber Wumba or uh, Born Sleepy by Underworld. I think that they're going for that market. They're going for the shouty lager in hand in the nightclub, mm. and they might make a lot of money out of it. I don't know if it's any good, but I quite. I, I, it's toe tapping, nice. What do you feel about uh, rock stars um, it, acting in films and vice versa, actors popping up in bands? Sorry. Well, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? You know, I work in a bank. I don't. You know, moonlight in a supermarket uh, <laughs> in the evenings, <laughs> and that for me is, is that the obvious correlation. That's essentially the same thing. Um, but you aren't moonlighting on the radio. Well, yeah, but I'm not getting paid. Yeah, but that's, well, obviously there's a reason, because that's why we've changed your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, well, the thing is, if you live in London, you're only ever, what, six feet from a rat, and you're only ever ten minutes from a badly aimed Reese Ephraim's haymaker. Because <laughs> uh, he's constantly punching people, so I'm not going to say anything bad about that. Well done, Sam. <laughs> um, we'll come to Sammy from the north. Um, it's just left me cold. I'm not... I'm not fussed one way or another. I was hoping for more, especially with the title. I didn't get what I wanted, and I feel knocked by that. <laughs> Scroobius, have you... You've got a bit of, you've got a bit of effing and blinding in some of your tunes. Is that a cheap attempt to get some attention? I think uh, this song, it, it seems to be going... I, I, I don't know, I think the whole thing seems to be... It's like he's actor, therefore the band are going to get some coverage, but that's not enough, so they'll do a let's go... Mental, mental, yeah. Uh, just to get, uh, but I think he's got that sing along and a uh, lads culture. People will, will go for it. Maybe uh, definitely the kind of Chamber Wamba and and that uh, that Reef song that was uh, put a very chant up, along. Yeah, put yeah. your hand. It, it's got that kind of vibe to it, and it was it was inoffensive. Pleasant enough, you say. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Well, uh, I'm afraid I'm pretty much gonna have to wrap it up. Uh, Stuart McConey is next with his Freak Zone. Hang around for that if you like some uh, esoteric music. We, as I say, are going to be away for a little while, so um, check the website for uh, further information on who's standing in and uh, when we will be back. And we'll see you soon. Six music. New Order are re-releasing a number of their uh, classic albums, including Technique, and from it, of course, Fine Time, uh, kick-starting The Steve Show. Welcome back to me. Um, let's have a massive round of applause for me. I think we're all deeply excited that I have graciously returned for one week to fulfil my BBC obligations, uh, brackets, contract. And um, yes, I apologise to everyone. I sort of disappeared without any real warning. Uh, I understand that David Quantic has been filling in uh, wonderfully, I imagine, with a certain sardonic look at uh, music and possibly the week's news, I'm not sure. But um, we're back, as I say, for one week, and then I've got to disappear again, so I apologise. But we should make it a good show, uh, guys. Let's make it an absolute blinder. And um, what can I say? You know, I've, I've, I've been away. Uh, um, I've been stateside, I'm not going to BS anyone. Uh, a lot of glamorous stuff was going on there. Um, before I, I fill you in on, on what's been happening, uh, I should welcome my uh, compadres. We've got Sammy from the north. Hiya. Hello, alright, how are you? Uh, I've got a little bit of a cold going on, but I'm okay. I've got a cold as well, so there's going to be quite a lot of sniffling. You have always got a cold, though. Well, you say that, but sometimes it's just my massive drug addiction <laughs> <laughs> that I masquerade uh, as a cold. And, uh, of course, Tiny Dan. Hello. We've not heard from you, Dan, for many, many months, yeah. but a lot of people are wondering um, who you are. I'm erratic. I'm very erratic. I'm, I'm not reliable. Um, I'm a, apparently a very tiny man, yes. according to you. Um, that's not true. I measured myself against a life-size cutout of uh, wee Jimmy Cranky. Right. And, and you're... I towered uh, above her. Really? Him. Well, I, oh, you've, hang on, what? Him? Him. I yes, don't know what him, yeah. But, um, yeah, well, it's lovely to have you back. A lot of people, oh, of course, uh, probably won't even remember who you are. No, no, I don't. Um, no. In your honour, I thought I would play a tune especially for you. Oh, really? Um, I was, yeah, whenever I think of this song, it's ski -lo, I'm thinking it? instantly, yeah. of course yeah. it's ski -lo. Yeah, it's ski -lo. Um, but, uh, it's lovely to have you back. Thank yeah. you so much. It's bullying. Yeah. It's bullying. Hello? I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I was a baller. From 1995, Skilo and I wish uh, very much indeed uh, for coming back. But listen, I I've barely got back in the hot seat, and I'm already thinking about next week. And uh, I'm going to be absent again. I will explain fully to you, the listener, where I'll be going um, after we've spoken to who's going to be sitting in next week. And you think already we're thinking ahead? And I'll tell you, it's not like we've just found some, you know, kind of would-be DJ, some local radio hack. It's only Ricky Wilson from the Kaiser Chiefs. No. Round of applause. Oh, hi. Hi, yes, hi. Um, yeah, now, Ricky, um, there's a lot of pressure sitting in uh, for a big radio show like this. Have you had any experience? Yeah. 
Great, yeah, well, I've been on the radio before, and I've listened to the radio. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have over three radios in my house. Okay, brilliant. Not, not counting my digital TV, which also... Has radio facilities. Radio. Yeah. Um, what sort of style will you be going with? Will you be trying to just be yourself, or will you be affecting a kind of DJ voice like that? Well, I, I kind of see this as my big audition. Sure. When, for like, you know, next year, we will take some time off, and I'm hoping that I can do this on a more permanent basis, maybe a Sunday afternoon slot. Perhaps um, further down the road, uh, you'll get yourself uh, as a panelist on the X Factor. Well, that would be um, that. That is the ultimate goal for anyone. <laughs> Absolutely. In any career. <laughs> now, where do we speak to you right now, Ricky? I'm in Athens. Okay. Is that Athens, Georgia? Athens, Greece. Is that a holiday? No, no, no. I haven't had a holiday uh, ever. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness uh, me. No, uh, I'm, I'm in the hotel room. Waiting to support REM. Oh, fantastic. Uh, do you mean support them in a sort of spiritual way? Um, <laughs> because I know they've got a lot of problems. Support them in a more physical way. Actually keep them standing up still. <laughs> all pretty old now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so you're, you're performing uh, with your band, Kaiser Chiefs. That's my band. <laughs> yeah. Didn't want to, I almost said the Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, I've embarrassed myself. You can say either. I don't mind. I'm not a fussy. Well, I know a lot of your fans will be a lot more fascistic about that. Maybe it's White Stripes might. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, is this is this one of the biggest gigs of your career? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> what what? Th let's not go down that road. It's barely um, tickling my day, to be honest. Do you get stressed and nervous before you go on in front of thousands of people? Do you? Well, I don't never perform in front of that many people. I'm well, too scared. Yeah, you must have you must have stood in front of people before. I've stood in front. I of was people. more nervous doing a best man <laughs> speech than I have been. Yeah, that is the most terrifying thing I can ever imagine, is doing a best man I like speech. it when you meet another best man and you can talk about how terrifying it is. Yeah, and how did your speech go? Is there any zingers you can remember? Oh, I can't remember any zingers. Um, but <laughs> it, was, it was kind of off the cuff. It was uh, very long. Uh, I think I did well. It's, it's walking a tightrope, because you can't be offensive, yet you can't be too bland. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's very tricky, and obviously I would always feel that there was a certain pressure, you know, having worked in the comedy industry. To be properly funny. For you. I know, but it's the same thing for me. Everyone expected, you know, here comes Ricky, he was going to crowd surf or something. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Did you get the guitar out? That would have been obvious. Uh, I can't play the guitar. Ah, oh, you can embarrass yourself. Anything. I could play the ukulele a bit, but that's about it. Um, well, you could have, if the, was the bride called Ruby? Because that, uh, there's an obvious shoe in there. I did actually <laughs> recite the lyrics to Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> point. But um, that was more of a self defacing joke. But now then, the right phrase. I don't think it is. A facing. Um, now listen, be careful making up phrases and words when you're on the radio because it's all about words are your tool, alright? You can't sort of just jump around, pogo around the stage, showing off on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah words are a tool, and uh, you know, I am a tool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, just tell us a little bit more, can you tell us a bit about the new album? Because I know people are hotly anticipating it. There's nothing you need to know. Right. Just, uh, it's, it's out in the shops on October the 20th, and uh, we wouldn't have put it there if we weren't confident. Ooh, that sounded arrogant. Frankly. Um, I think it sounded good because you don't want a bad guy from the band going, it's great or it's the best album we've done because I'm not going to say anything else. Sure. It's boring. I'd, I'd prefer to just sit back, relax, and let word of mouth take over. <laughs> That's very confident. Is it a, a radical departure from the same we've grown to love? Um, I'd say it was moving forward. Departure, no. Maybe kind of just pushing, pushing ourselves. We just hope that, you know, we take people that like us with us. Sure. Maybe invite a few more along. Uh, hey, listen, yeah, if some new fans can come along, that will certainly um, boost sales. So, um, <laughs> thumbs up there. <laughs> um, it's all about sales. <laughs> well, I disagree. But, um, uh, <laughs> I judge the best I albums. I judge the best albums entirely on their sales. <laughs> thus making the best of the Eagles the greatest album ever made. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, now, uh, while I've been away, I've been away for about a month, I've come back, I was just looking